Hey everyone, I'm Todd Stevens. And I'm Ross Miriam. You're watching the Versus series on StarCityGames.com. Well, it's Thursday. We've had three days of Corset 19 playing some standard and modern, and so far they've all looked great. So we're going to try it out uh, again here on Thursday, back in modern, with probably the most, uh, probably like the biggest jump of any of these decks. You know, the most ambitious, yes. I would say, of the week. So the least promising. The least promising, but also my favorite. It is a sweet deck. Yeah. I will so, give you that. Yeah. So what I'm playing here is I'm playing some Scred Dragons. Okay, so we're trying to take advantage of the new Sarkin. Sarkin, the fire Come on, Todd, speaker. It's in your deck. It's in my deck somewhere. Fireblood. Sarkin Fireblood. So you had it the whole time. <laughs> and uh, what I particularly like about it is in these Scred decks that they have like you know a high land count with like 24 lands, and they have a bunch of like... Uh, you know, kind of expensive cards where they really do, and they don't really have any card advantage. So you can just really flood sometimes, or just not get enough lands, or you know you just draw the wrong half of your deck, kind of thing. Like they really struggle with that, and so Sarkin yeah. can uh, rummage twice and help you uh, smooth out your draws a lot for a three mana planeswalker. I like that. Yeah, uh, it starts on three pluses to four, so it's outside of bolt range, which is important. And you can pretty easily set it up where you landed on a stable board because you have so much cheap removal in the deck. Mm -hmm. Lightning Bolt and Scred are both very good at one mana. And then because you're playing a bunch of dragons, you're playing some copies of Draconic Roar. Oh, yeah. So, Standard staple. Yes. Draconic an Roar. Another cheap removal spell there. So you clear the board early. If your opponent's a creature deck, you land your Sarkin, and then you can just start slamming dragons. Yeah. And the Stormbreath Dragon's a real hard card to kill in modern. Survives yep. Lightning Bolt, survives Fatal Push, can't get targeted by Path to Exile. So I, I don't know how people are killing that one. Yeah. Um, and then, like, also, uh, Glorybringer, like, with all the creatures in Modern, Glorybringer can just, like, come in and be another removal spell, can help pair with, like, Lightning Bolt to take out big stuff like Ermag Angler, things like that. Um, yeah, so, and then Thunderbreak Regent pairs well with Draconic Roar to just kind of get some damage on your opponent, you know, kind of chip their life total down. Yeah, you've reached from, uh, from Draconic Roar, you've reached from Thunderbreak Regent, you have Lightning Bolt, and you have a couple copies of Chandra, Torch of Defiance. So a lot of ways to deal incidental damage, and then all your... Drag most of your dragons have haste, so you're going to uh, turn the corner pretty quickly once you have your board set up and you maybe you blood moon them or maybe you just deal with their early threats and uh, end the game before they can draw out of it. So, yep. uh, Scred Red is just one of those decks that's been around for a little while. It's on the fringes of modern, and this is a, just a new variant of it. has some different threats in it, but threats that make a lot of sense and let you play a Planeswalker that solves, as Todd was saying, one of the major issues in the deck, which is its lack of consist consistency due to low velocity. Doesn't yeah. see a lot of cards, so it really depends on having a strong opening hand. Now you can filter through those draws, don't flood as often, maybe find a scrying sheet, start drawing some extra lands, and then rummage them away. Yep. So your scrying sheet starts turning into spells. That seems cool. Yep, that's 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 actually, yeah, that's really nice. And then, and yeah, like these decks are pretty threat light, like against the control decks traditionally, but if you can start rummaging, find your threats. Uh, and because I have all dragons as threats, I get to play like a Cavern of Souls in here. So, you know, you can maybe make them uncounterable. Yeah, cavern on Dragon. Yeah, like a Storm Breath with, like, against Jeskai that, from a Cavern. That's going to be really hard yeah. for them to deal with. And Sarkin will eventually kill them. If a Control yep. Deck does not answer that, his ultimate will end the game, making five four fours. I guess so they, they have some Verdicts. So you don't, four five fives. Four five fives, yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> um, so that, they have some Verdicts to answer that, but, you know, the having a plan, have, that won't come up that often, but right. you know, against a Control Deck, it's nice to have the threat of it. Because there are going to be games where they don't have it, and they start having to waste burn spells to keep the Sarkin off while you're just generating advantage and they're wasting cards. So, And hopefully the Sarkin with the adding mana ability lets you double spell earlier. Like maybe you can uh, have, like, when you have five lands, you can add two mana, play like a Thunderbreak Regent they want to counter, and then you can land like a Blood Moon that like knocks them out, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, there's lots, lots of like a lot of the main decks already built to beat creature decks, and that's what we're going to try here today, because what are you playing? I'm playing humans. Okay. Just stock humans. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing all week. We've been playing new decks against established decks to see how they stack up. And yeah, your deck is very removal heavy, but we've seen humans 
take out removal heavy decks before. <laughs> yeah, always beat the guy good. on camera somehow. Yep. Uh, you got plenty of sweepers, plenty of cheap spot removal, but you know the human stack is really good and it wins a lot for a reason. Yeah. So you're still gonna have to play the games and show me that you can beat me. Yeah. Still playing four and five mana dragons against humans and for, with <laughs> reflector mage and stuff. I can still be tough. Yeah. So let's do it. Although storm breath does not get targeted by reflector mage. So. That's a good point. All right. So poker hand again. Yeah. Let's see if you can win one. All right. I'll. I gave Probably you not. a window yesterday. I only got two pair. <laughs> only got two pair. Now I got three. I have four of a kind. I have one pair. I had a pair of sixes. <laughs> I have two pair, but they're both twos. Oh, two two pairs of twos? Yeah, two pairs of twos. Okay, well, that's that's pretty good. It's well, really four pairs of twos, but who's counting? I guess you're going to be on the play again. Yeah, I'm great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, have the best card in my deck. Same. And two of the... Yeah, this hand looks great. Okay, go ahead and kick us off. I will name Human. Okay. Well, I'm not countering anything. Aether Vile. Yep. Aether Vile is good. So that's good against my, my Blood Moon plan for sure. I'm going to play a Snow Covered Mountain and I'll pass her in. Let's get a counter on this Vile. And that's not a great draw, but I will name Human again and play a Thalia Guardian of Thraben. So Todd could not use a one mana removal spell immediately. True. Uh, we're going to keep on playing our mountains and I will pass the turn. So I'll go to two. Mm -hmm. Draw. Interesting. Wish I'd had that last turn. I will. So, hmm. Hmm. Not sure what uh, I'm supposed to be doing with this, but I'll, we'll start with an activation. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and four resolves lightning bolt the Thalia. And so I was thinking about it. I, I probably should just be doing that on your upkeep before you move it to two. The problem is because like if you just go to combat with the Thalia, I'm going to be bolting it, and then you could like violin an image and copy the Thalia or something that would be like really annoying for me. Yeah. So I think I think probably the correct play since I know I'm going to be lightning bolting that anyway. The probably the correct play is during your upkeep, like on the or just like on your turn trigger. or just on my turn. It's yeah. The same thing. If you know you're going to bolt before I have to make a decision, just play yeah, the just on bolt your turn. it right away. Uh, so I have to figure out what I want to name with this Battle Mage. I was going to name Lightning Bolt yeah. uh, if Todd let me resolve the Vile activation. Now, I think my plan is going to be to name... See, this is where Ross knowing my deck is a lot better than just... No, he'd be like, oh, it's normal scred. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd kind of like kind of want to name Anchor of the Gods, but you don't have a lot of those. I think I'm just going to name Scred. Yeah. Just uh, take the other one-man removal spell that yeah. I have four of instead of three. Yep, and then I'll play a third land and play Mantis Rider and attack for three. So you go to 17? Yep, 17. Pass the turn. Hmm. I'm not too scared of a Blood Moon here. Yeah, with having the Vile. And you only have two cards left? Yeah. Anger would be very good. Anger would be very good. I kind of, I think I just want to play this because it's just much better on my mana. And I think I think this is, even though, I think I'm just going to play a Sarkin. Sure. So I'm going to go Sarkin, discard. Right, good call. Plus. I'm going to discard. I think I'm just going to get rid of the Blood Moon, since Ross already has Vile and everything. The Blood Moon just probably won't do a whole lot. And I'll just draw a card. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to... Tick this to three. That's a pretty good draw. Um, I'm going to play a canopy and crack it. Mm -hmm. And I will attack. Not sure who uh, I think I want to attack this Sarkin. I don't want to get attacked. Yeah, I'm already at 17. And... Yeah. Because the adding mana for, for dragons yeah, that's could be the, pretty that's rough. That's the thing I'm worried about. Yeah. And then I'm going to play Athalia. Okay. Pass turn. Hmm. All right, so two cards in hand. We could jam a dragon, but then if Ross has a reflector mage, it's really bad for us. The Thalia is pretty bad. Uh, I would have would have loved to do this, but Thalia is really annoying. Um, so maybe we just loot again. This is the safest play, but that's just using that as its only thing during the turn is not exciting in the slightest. We 
for two cards. I mean, he could have a Reflector Mage, but I think this just is the best use of my mana. And if he doesn't have Reflector Mage, this is going to do a whole lot for me. So hope he doesn't have that out of one of his two cards. I'll okay. play that in pass. End turn, activate the roll. Yep. Okay. Don't put a creature in. Whew. All right. <laughs> Dodged it so far. Still got the draw step. He's been drawn on fire today. That's those sleeves. The or the on fire sleeves. Sure. Is that what they are? Yeah, okay. they're some, I'm gonna some, play a kite self rebooter. Take a look at your hand. Okay, so like I wanted to fire blood bolt. That's what I wanted to do last turn. I just drew another blood moon, so that wasn't great. Uh that glory bringer's a problem. Yeah, that glory bringer could be nice if I draw a land. Um I I, you're um, Yeah, this. I definitely just have to take the lightning bolt. Yep. And then I will uh leave it up. Play a noble hierarch and attack for four with this Mantis Rider. All right, so I'm 17, right? Yes. I think I'm fine trading Mantis Rider for... I think I'm fine trading here, uh, Regent for Rider. It does turn on all your other attackers, but then I just save four life here, and it's just always... Like, it's not... Unless I find, like, something for a Noble Hierarch. Like, this is just not, not trading, basically. You know, it's always going to trade. So I think might as well just keep my life total high. Okay, pass the turn. This will be a big thing. Can you find the land? I did not. I hope you drew a scred. I drew a pretty good one. Is it Anger of the Gods? Because I can't beat that one. It's not that good. Not that good. Um, hmm. Why is Draconic Roar not a dragon spell? Like, you know, because it's dragon spells. Like, you can cast stuff like Nameless Inversion with this. Yeah. Two mana. Why can't you cast like dra this should be like tribal dragon for Traconic Well, I mean you wouldn't you would have to spend four on Sarkin and then you wouldn't have three for the roar. So. Oh right, I was thinking three and three. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's four on Sarkin. Yeah. All right, so our roar is gonna cast cost three. And then uh, so I could just get rid of this Thalia and get that out of here. I probably want to kill the freebooter so I can get my bolt back, but I cannot do roar plus bolt. I don't really see a reason not to wait and just wait till your turn in case of lieutenants, anything like that. See how you attack with this noble hierarch, all that kind of stuff. So I think I'll just go ahead and pass the turn. It's better to hold up the roar than play the Sarkin. Okay, I will attack for five. Okay. So we're going to be roaring. Really wish I had drawn Restoration Angel this turn. And I think I just want to get I want to get my lightning bolt back. So okay, so I take three, go to seventeen. You take four, go to thirteen. Yep. Bolt back in your hand, and I will play a champion of the parish, and pass the turn. All right, so we're still really looking for land. All right, got the land. So now we can I, we can glory bring our exert, which is nice, or we could Sarkin loot away the Blood Moon and still have Bolt up to protect Sarkin with the Glorybringer coming down the next turn. I think I like Glorybringer because how like the exerting works. Like You really want it down as early as possible so you can exert it as much as possible. Yeah. I also think like, this is easily going to be a 2-2 next turn in all likelihood so your Bolt doesn't actually protect it. Right. It doesn't Sarkin. protect Sarkin. Yeah. yeah. So let's go Glorybringer. And we'll exert on Thalia. And this also just really helps our Sarkin and Lightning Bolt having that Thalia out of here. Yep. So I go to 13. Yep, 13 all. Go ahead. And draw. And that was a horrible draw. But I have a third Thalia, so. <laughs> uh, I guess it's, that's a, your second. I guess. No, it's the third. Oh, yeah, that top one. Never mind. All right, so four is coming in, so I'm going down to nine. Yep. And awesome. I will pass the turn. All right, so Glorybringer not exerted, but next turn he'll be able to kill something again. This card's not bad. Maybe I just maybe I just play this and play defense. All right, so if I go the Sarkin Lightning Bolt route, um, Sarkin's still just going to die. Or I'd take another five, one of those two. I think I'm just going to play this on defense, and it's pro-white, so you can't really get in there. And I'll say go. Yeah, that's a problem. Um. Mm. Pro white is nice. Uh, 
Dude, it's red dragons. This is fun. Um. That is an interesting one. And I think I have to get really aggressive here to try to close this game out. Yeah. Okay. So... I am going to... Oh, Phantasmal, Phantasmal Image. Imp the Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Glorybringer doesn't uh, kill non-dragons. Otherwise, Todd would just be dead here, yeah. which would be awesome. Uh, so I don't think it much matters which one I copy. This is just going to either trade with Stormbreath or die to Lightning Bolt on the next turn. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just copy Stormbreath there, I can sure. Yeah. Uh, and I am going to attack with everything so that if Todd wants to eat a creature this turn, he has to take 8 damage slash die to this block champion or die to my 3 mana creature. Yeah, so I think I definitely want to eat a creature. So I think we're going down to one, blocking champion, because then that would be two, four, eight, and I go down to one. Yeah, I think that's... Okay, you're at one. I think that's my best chance. Pass the turn. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bolt Thalia. You drew another removal spell? Oh wait, oh no no, no. Yeah. that's non dragon. I can't I can't yeah. glory bringer that. I can't glory bringer yes, that. Yes, you cannot glory bringer that. Alright, so yeah, I guess yeah, we'll just bolt that. So I'm gonna have or wait, wait, no, no, no. Let, let me no, I'm gonna you go to glory bringer first. first, yeah. Yeah, I want to get the Thalia yeah. out of the way. Yeah, for the mana. Yeah, Makes glory sense. bringer, the Thalia first. I take four, go to nine. Take four, go to nine. after that, I'll go ahead and bolt the well. Sorry. I may not. Let's let's play this and, and loot first. Sure. I'll loot I'll play that, tick up, loot away this. Draw some scrads, please. I guess Blood if you draw scrads, you'll just bolt the metal mage, and then that'll okay. be bad. Um, rummage that away, and I did draw a scred, so I'm going to bolt that, <laughs> scred that. And I'll keep keep this card in hand because of Sarkin, and I'll pass the turn. Okay, that was... Something, I guess. So if Todd has a brick in hand and bricks on the top two cards, I'll have him dead next turn. Wow. I mean, oh, here's yeah. one. Like I drew, yeah. I drew a, a creature that turns on Noble Hierarch. Yep. Uh, and pass the turn. All right. Exert. No brick. I said no brick. Ooh. Dragons. Okay. All right. So I think we can still just get. Just attack and exert. I think it's just better than just not attacking. Yeah, it's, it's not still... attacking loses to Reflector Mage. Whereas... Yes, yeah. and so I might as well kill the non-pro white creature, like the that one. Sure. So, yeah. I just I just need to draw um, a uh, Mass Rider. Yeah, you need to draw a Mass Rider or an image to image one of my dragons. Oh uh, well, I can't. Getting Noble to cuts me off image. Oh, well, because those are both humans. Actually, it doesn't because I'm holding Cavern Souls. So okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. So you need smart. image or rider. Yeah, image or rider. Go ahead. Another cavern. Oh. Wah, wah. oh, last card. You hit the other glory bringer. <laughs> yep. Good job, Sarkin. See, that's why the rummaging is important. Okay, we're here for sideboarding. Uh, on my side, the three cards you see me trimming here are cards that I've generally trimmed in removal heavy matchups. Both Freebooter and Meddling Mage are just tough to stick when the opponent has a large array of different removal spells. And while Reflector Mage is good against big creatures. It does not target Stormbreath Dragon. It's awkward to target Glorybringer because you really need to be able to Violet into play to stop the Exert trigger. Uh, and Todd just doesn't have a lot of dragons outside of Stormbreath. It's just Glorybringer and two Thunderbreak Regents. So I don't think Reflector Mage is going to be great. I'm bringing in a couple more threes, so I like to bring out a three to keep my curve a little low. Reclamation Sage will, of course, help against Blood Moon and Ratchet Bomb, and then Dismember is great against dragons. So I, I did think about bringing in Dire Fleet Daredevil. Uh, mm -hmm. It's generally good against a Lightning Bolt decks and good against Blood Moon, but uh, most Bolt decks are all like Jeskai and Blue Moon. They have cantrips that you can cast aggressively, which is nice, and you really just have Lightning Bolt. Scred yeah. obviously doesn't do anything. Chronic War doesn't do anything in my deck, so I'm not going to try the Dire Fleet Daredevils in this specific matchup. Just bring in these three. Okay, cool. 
Um, over here, uh, you know, I'm bringing in some more creature removal, some sweepers. It's pretty obvious. Uh, I'm going to cut one Chandra because it just costs a lot of mana. Four mana is a lot, especially w against Thalia that we saw like that last game where Thalia really taxes the mana. So uh, it's just a four mana singular removal spell for the most part. Uh, so I'm going to trim one of those. I have two in the deck. And I'm going to trim two uh, Blood Moons. Blood Moon is still a really good card against humans. Particularly, there's times where it'll just win you the game. And so I'm keeping two in the deck, uh, but we saw there are also other games, like that last game, basically gave me a Vile uh, that it's you know not as good. Also, against Thalia, it can just cost a lot, uh, which you know, I'm not really into that either, but it's still just a great card. But I think, I think my deck's pretty well set up here for the most part, and so that was like the card that I felt like trimming the most. Yeah, I think you're a maniac, but let's play some games. Okay. Okay, we're here for game two. I am on the play. Another solid hand. We're just going to curve out as best we can. Oh, dang. I was going to say, if, if he cur curves out pretty well, he's going to destroy us, because yeah, it's very slow, but we have a few uh, real good cards, so. Okay, well, unclaimed territory and human. Vile. Uh-oh. Oh, that was the worst draw we could have in our deck. Go ahead. And play a Thalia. Pass the turn. And we're dead. Go ahead. End of turn, activate. Okay. Noble. We're very dead. Go to my turn. Yep. Man, Blood Moon's such a good card, Todd. You should be playing all your Blood Moons. <laughs> Look at how good it is. Mantis Rider. Yeah, I'm still dead. <laughs> I will attack for five. Okay, 15. And... Hmm. So you don't have a Bolter of Scred. I'll pass. I left him right on top. Go ahead. Uh, and a turn, activate. Okay. I will put in a meddling mage and name Anger of the Gods. All right, you got me. I'm dead. <laughs> You're at fifth. I mean, I was going to Mantis Rider Lieutenant you this turn. Yeah, I'm dead. Bring this to three, play Lieutenant, put the trigger on the stack, file this in. Yep, so I kept... I kept like a hand that was relying on anger, and I was attacking for fifteen guns. this turn. Yeah, yeah, no, I was just yeah. dead. Thalia, Thalia just really, really killed me. Yeah. I, I didn't draw. I was on the draw, so I would not draw a one mana removal spell or a draconic roar or something like that, and I did not. So yeah. the trick here is to take this to three, and then I cast Lieutenant, put its trigger in the stack, and vial in this Mantis Rider. I guess so that this does leave this as an extra counter. It's not a trick to add more damage, but yeah, these would have been fours, threes, and one. Yeah, fifteen, turn four. Yep, nice deck. All right, we're at game three, and this is it. We need we need Sarkin to pull it out here to keep the core set 19 win streak alive. I have a lot more interaction than last time. I would definitely like to draw some lands to be able to play my big stuff, and uh, but this is going to be a better keep than last time. Okay, so we'll keep it. Uh, I'm on a six card hand, and I do have this awkwardness here, but I'm on the draw, and hopefully I can land this turn one, and then I have a pretty good hand from there. So I'll scry, and that'll be right there. Okay, go ahead. That's a okay card, but again, we need some land, so go ahead. Okay, hopefully we hit our next land Get drop. Get this to one, draw, and play Athalia. Okay, pass. Put a counter on this. Nice. Um. I think I'm good just popping the ratchet bomb here. I just want to get the ether vial out of here and keep and just slow Ross down. So I think I'm fine just popping it. And might as well right now because he can't just vial in a one drop and in response because it'll just also die to ratchet bomb. Yep. And I'll pass turn. Attack for two. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take it. 18. I will play a Champion of the Parish. Okay. I will play a Ziggurat into Meddling Mage. Okay. I will name Anger of the Gods. This gets a counter. Pass the turn. All right, so I wanted to see what Ross would do there. I didn't want him to play like another Thalia here, so he didn't, so he named Anger. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt this and then scred. Do I even need to scred this? Uh, maybe not. I don't have any Angers. I could draw like an anger later. I may just want to scred this champion. This champion's just more threatening, probably. All right, we'll get rid of the champion. Yep. Using my mana there so I can untap. Oh, never mind. There's anger. 
Uh, so I can untap and land the Blood Moon and pass the turn. Tilt, attack you for two. 16. Uh, pass the turn. I guess this, this Blood Moon, I guess, is pretty good, like you were saying. Yeah, you know. All right, fourth land lets us hit our other Chandra that Fred, we still have. It's really hard to not have good draws. <laughs> still does. Go ahead. Uh, pass. All right, let's see if we can find some dragons. Dragon. All right, nope, two to you. 18. And I'll just play this Ratchet Bomb in case you find like an Ether Vial. Go ahead. Pass. I'll put one counter on the Ratchet Bomb. Yep. All right, let's find some dragons. No dragon. Dragon? Yeah. All right, cast Glorbringer. No, dismember. You're 14. I had a dragon for a little bit. All right, you're at 14. Go ahead. Pass. This is like, this feels like legacy, like just Blood Moon Chandra. All right. 12. To you. Need to find something good real, real quick here. Under Rick Regen. Go ahead. No, I'm just dead, I think. Uh, pass turn. Top card. Ten. Ten. Hit you down to four more. Put you Nine down to six. six. Go ahead. Ungastables. Yep. That's what Blood Moon does. That's what Blood Moon does. Yeah. Don't think I was ever beating that draw. Yeah, my opener was those and the Chandra in two lands. So it was like that. So our Corset 2019 deck came through there with a big time draw. Um, the Ratchet Bomb really paired well with the Blood Moon to just get rid of your Aether Vial, can't cast any spells anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't really chalk this one up to Corset 19. <laughs> I think Sarkin was one of the worst cards in your deck. I don't know, it was good it game was one. The, it literally was was not. It well, languished so, right, in so, your hand for very long, doing very little. All right, so game game one, we played it like right away, where it got to it. Like I d did not have lands, I got to get rid of a blood moon to to hit another land drop. It gained five life, so it was like gain five life loot there. And then, then whenever we played the second one, I got to rummage twice, and like that second the second rummage was like the glory bringer that I needed to finish the game out. You know, I, I think you probably wouldn't have needed that glory bringer if those two Sarkins were just better cards. I don't not know. to say I, that Sarkin is bad, it's just not yeah. very good in this matchup. Yeah, okay, this, this is not the matchup with for cheap it. removal and Blood Moon. Yeah, which you decided to bring out, but yeah, I just you know. went with a cheap removal plan. I didn't need the Blood Moon until you like game three. Did I did need the Blood Moon. Well, yeah, game three, I did have the Blood Moon and it made it real, really easy. So yeah, I did. Yes. I, it was on easy mode. I, I was trying to win on hard mode, but cheap, cheap removal into Blood Moon is usually a pretty good plan against humans. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think Sarkin will shine more in the mid range and controlling matchups. Uh, where it's going to stick for a while, it's not under a lot of pressure, and you'll get to loot a, loot a ton. This just isn't really the matchup for it, but right. it's not a matchup where you really need it. When right. you have 12 cheap removal spells and 7 sweepers and 4 blood moons, then you know, you're in pretty good shape. <laughs> yep. We played a real close, though, though, to be fair, we played a very close game one. I don't have mm -hmm. to do it one life. Uh, I needed really one more spell there in the middle part. I ended up drawing a f uh, like one more land than probably on average and didn't have a canopy to cycle. I drew three Thalias a little early and was stuck with one in hand for a while. Eventually got to play it, but you know, if I draw some of the creatures in another order, I probably get an extra point in at some uh, in some fashion. Uh, what was impressive with the change to this version of the deck was Glorybringer and, yeah, and Stormbreath Dragon. Good. The dragons were good. Yeah, uh, Glorybringer let you apply some pressure to me while acting as another removal spell. Stormbreath Dragon just bricked my team. Yeah. Um, it's possible I should have a 3-3 three, three split there. I have four Glory Bringers right now. That should probably be a 3-3 three, because three, a lot of the other matchups, Storm Breath's going to be better. But there are just a decent amount of creature decks these days where Glory Bringer can just, just do a uh, lot. Honestly, I think you might play 4-4. Four, four. Just yeah, cut down maybe. Thunderbreak region. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But, Thunderbreak kind of teams up well with the Draconic Roar and everything. I just want it to be a little cheaper, you know. And Yeah, it's possible that that's making your curve too high. But I like Storm yeah. Breath Dragon a lot in Modern. It's just so hard to answer. You can go... Uh, if you have like Sarkin into Chandra, take them both up for mana, play your Thunderbreak region. I don't know, that's like something you could do. 
Yeah, you got a, you got a couple to do that. Whatever. Yeah. I'm I'm excited. I think Storm of Dragon is an actively good yeah. threat to have. So two seems a little low. But the dragons were good. That was the impressive part of the deck to me. Mm-hmm. I think it, the normal Scarred Red deck would have like Koths and things. Right. You definitely don't win that game one without Glorybringer coming down. Yeah, I'd have and, a Koth and like P and LR, P and Kieran LR. Yeah, that would have right. been, P and Kieran would have been fine, but yeah. Koth definitely would not have been, would not have been good at all. <laughs> right. So uh, I think you definitely lose game one without Glorybringer there, and uh, um, I've, I'm able to win game two just on the play if you don't have a cheap removal spell. So humans still, uh, um, far from an easy matchup for any deck, even if you're packing a ton of removal. You do have easy games like that in game three. Uh, and uh, the switch to the deck, the, the dragons seemed good. Yeah. That, that's the part of the deck that was impressive. But I did not expect Sarkin to be particularly impressive in this matchup. Yeah, not in this matchup. But I'm still excited to play it in the future. So, course at 19, still r- going strong. It's 4-0. Uh, 4-0. Tomorrow we have a Johnny and Resplendent Angel teaming up. We got two white mythics. We have a <laughs> black-white knight angel deck. Uh, I guess, and that's going to be going up against Blue White Gift. So I think that could be a little tough because it doesn't have a whole lot of ways to interact with like the whole gift stuff. So yeah, you know, like we said, we were trying to put it up against like a little bit tougher. That that, week, so. that I think is going to be a tough matchup. The five O might might be hard for you to get. Todd's yeah. going to be playing the Black White deck. I'll be playing the Gift deck. Uh, but so far, Core Set Nineteen, it's just impressive. Yeah, the cards we've been using so far today have been impressive. We haven't, or we haven't, or I guess this week, not just today. Yeah, but uh. You know, we haven't been using a ton of the cards, you know, but the ones we have been have been yeah. really nice I mean, this when is the see the battlefield. This is the last set in standard before rotation, so the standard format's really big. Mm-hmm. So you're not really going to see a ton of, a lot of innovation. The Tezzeret deck we play, I played earlier this week, definitely one of the more innovative decks we have, but for the most part, you're going to see decks slot into homes that are already built but need a little bit of boost. Mm-hmm. And uh, the... The cards that we were putting in seem to provide that boost pretty well. So, cool. Uh, one more this week: mm-hmm. black, white versus blue, white. You can come back and see that one. But yep. for Todd Stevens, I'm Ross Miriam. Thank you for watching the Versus series by StarCityGames.com. Bye.